Okay, hello everyone. Uh, today we are solving day 10 and uh, because previous days weren't that much successful, I kind of want to try something different. I want to try to think first and figure out the solution first and then I'm going to try to start coding on the design. Okay, so I start by timer as usual. I go to the task. Okay, uh, it's nice to system deeply. Suppose you note the following points. Each line represents one point. Position are given. Players in X play how far left negative or right positive. Each point appears. Well, Y represents how far up negative or down. So basically, uh -huh. okay. Uh, at zero seconds, each point has a position given. Each second, each point velocity is added to its position. So a point with velocity one minus two is moving to the right, uh, but it's moving upward twice as quickly. If this point's initial position was nine, at each second's position would be count six three. Okay, sure. Um, yeah, over time points is above would move like this initially. One second, two seconds, three seconds, two, four seconds. After three seconds, the message appeared briefly high. Of course, your message will be much longer and will take many more seconds to appear. How? What message will eventually appear in the sky? Oh, what? Puzzle input, okay. So we have this, right? Okay, we have this. Um, okay, let's let's put it in input. So let's read input. Okay, now um, what is the relationship in the sky? So basically, we can we can visualize this, of course, right? But um, hmm. how do we know where where to look for the message? Like, should I print the whole space like this? Maybe, maybe. Okay, okay. So okay, let's try this. Uh, I don't know how to figure out. Is it correct message or not? It's probably not that easy, but I can try to like print current state, for example, and uh, just print, I don't know, hundred of states and then scroll quickly to see if I can spot anything, right? So basically our task for, for this will be first, we have to store this, this simulation data somehow. And second, uh, we need to know how to print it, right? So if, as, as I can see in the input, so the numbers are really, really, what? The numbers are really big, really big. Okay, so, um, hmm. So this is my theory, right? So numbers are really big. So this is apparently not a message, right? But, but we can actually, I hope they all move into the same direction. So into some, um, some smaller area, right? And so for example, so we can do this. We can count bounding box for each state and start like um, start the simulation right and when the bounding box like as it decreases we go on as it starts increasing again so they start moving in different directions then the previous state the, the minimal local minima would be our message probably like like this uh, high is uh, the, the is something like 
probably smallest, one of the smallest. Okay, let's let's do this thing. Let's let's um, parse this, right? And then let's learn to count the bounding box, and then let's print the bounding boxes, size of bounding boxes for first, you know, ten. Uh, hundred steps or something like that. So, so the the task task number one uh, parse like the parse parse line right. Well, this should be relatively simple. Um, like let x y v x v y being um, well, basically, <laughs> uh, the, the we have our e seek, which is basically optional minus and then slash d plus, right? Mm. And Actually, is this okay? Do I want to to yeah? Probably I want to return x x x y y v x v x v y v y. Or maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should return something like pause x y v. Okay, uh, let's say it's something like that. So let's see if it parses this line correctly. Um, it seems to, right? Let's see if the minus sign. It's fine with minus. Oh, I forgot to, like, yeah, the parse, parse, inter, parse along. Of course, we need numbers, right? Um, okay, so this is our um, Okay, okay. Now, what we want to do is uh, okay. basically we want to go over and okay, I, I, I'm, I'm going to like this uh, with this nested structure, so it's so simple, so I'll probably just keep everything in a, in a vector. Okay. It's just so simpler to work with. Um, okay, so basically what we need to do is next, next step, right? Basically, let's call these drones. They're drones, right? No? Stars, points. Okay, let's call them points. Uh, they call points points. Uh, then we call them points as well. Points. Okay. So basically, we take points and we go over and basically, well, let's call next point x y x y. So this is like really simple, right? So we basically return x v x. Y, V, Y, V, X, V, Y, right? And basically, map V, next 
point point chance. Uh, this is our next step, and the last thing we need to know is bounding box. Right. So bounding box is basically um, reduce mean. Uh, no, um, Yeah, basically reduce mean map first. Points. Minimal x, right? This, uh, okay. Let me. At least I will need these two functions. Okay, so this is a bounding box, right? So let's do this. Let's um, the times e like so let's say hundred, right? So let's. Uh, print a land the step and oh no I well I need to something to iterate okay let's do this reduce reduce um, Print a rounding box points. Next step points, right? Restart with like points, and we do this for one hundred steps. Okay, that why is not defined, and it's also. Let's see. Let's see if it. Um, huh. Okay. Yeah. It returns points. Obviously. Of course. Uh, let's see if the bounding box decreases in size. It's not really clear, right? Let's let's call an area. So this is the area of our bounding box, right? Okay, let's see what it prints. Let's see. It's is it going down? It's sort of going down, right? But really, really slowly. Okay, okay. Let's um, um like each ten thousand steps. And we, we are going to run this for thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand, four million, right? Let's see if um, it gets smaller after a million. Maybe it's too much. 
Yeah, I'll probably ask it for too much. Oh, um, so this is like computationally bound only, right? Because uh, we operate on the same stuff. It's also probably not very efficient to do enclosure again because we are like always creating new data. And instead, we could be modifying this data in place, which would be much more effective. Much more effective. Basically, X and Y could modify it in place. Okay, it's not going anywhere, so let me kill it and try it with smaller, smaller values. I wish Carl had um, a button to cancel the current evaluation, something like that. Um, should have right. Okay, uh, let me let me move this into part one. Actually, so when we evaluate the file, it doesn't uh, blow up our stack. Okay, so let's say. N, N, and a thousand here, right? Okay, in NS so eighteen ten part one. Let's try it for this out ten thousand. Is it okay I don't want it to return anything? Okay, so it, it is getting smaller, right? So, um, okay, so, and we tried it for 10,000, we tried for 10 times more. Okay, and then it get, it's getting bigger, right? So now they're flying away. So basically, if we, if we ju just, yeah, it, there is no point like going that, that far. Obviously, the smallest ones were somewhere around 10,000. Okay, and it's still quite big, actually. Like 5,000 by 5,000 pixels. So it's it wouldn't fit in a console, I guess. But we can we can actually generate something like hmm. Okay, so um. Yeah, I guess um, we can have points um, like smallest minimal bounding box. So we have bounding box here, right? Um, let me calculate its area. I hope the area approach is fine. Because actually there there might be a couple of criteria, right? So we, we might aim for smallest X size, smallest Y size, and smallest area. Okay, let's let's print all. Uh, okay, so basically, So now we're just trying to understand our task, right? So um, we keep going as long as as long as as long as as long as, as, long as 
we keep going as long as any of them is getting small right if all of them are getting bigger we return as then okay so basically um, uh, no huh. i mean it's step right so basically but okay okay uh so we have next points right so like this we calculate uh, the dimensions of of the next points okay and basically oh no sorry um yeah well basically mean between x land and mean x mean between y land and mean y mean between area and mean area this is our return value right so and here okay uh now if if like um Okay, it's even when when x line is bigger it starts to getting starts getting bigger well um okay let's let me just do the area first right so when area is bigger then mean area we are going to print lm i area and actually this is the points i guess as well let's print them yeah well, i'm going to use this one because and we return and we exit we stop right otherwise we go and we know that okay let's let's do this and range is and then the and the No, wait, what? Um, so strange. The area cannot possibly be bigger than... I'll probably arrange one is like yeah, yeah this, this is a problem at around ten thousand it should stop right so it's actually ten thousand uh four seventy six at this point we have wait what We have area of five four nine. Oh, so yeah, that's that's the solution. I guess that's the minimal area we have, and we have pretty small dimensions. Like okay, let me let me let me print bound the box here. Like okay. 
this okay so area is for dimensions actually pretty small from one or one one to seven, or seven so yeah we can print this to console obviously uh, okay okay let's let's figure out how to print this right so basically we know dimensions so we start from like main x main y uh-huh Okay, yeah, let's print it. Let's let's uh, let's let's print. Right, right now. Um, definitely print points. Right, and we have points here. Okay, so let um, we need a bounding box, obviously. Now we start uh, do sequence. So y goes from range from well i guess um hmm. well this this is gonna be really slow we're gonna be really slow unless okay wait, wait wait anyways it starts with y1 and uh, keeps going until y2 right so uh, then x does kind of the same starts with x1 and goes to x2 but we, what we need here is actually a map so um, it will be and it's it's even gonna be a set containing four Basically, this. Yeah, let me, let me see if this would work. think well oh, this is strange it's supposed to work actually Okay. This works. Right. Anyways, anyways, this works as well. Uh, so this accords uh, basically if. current coordinate is in course we print um, draw right otherwise we print that or space let's print it up right and uh, here need to print the new line and somewhere after that we need to flash ok 
case something is working. Let is not correct. So let me start again. I need to read. Okay, print points. Okay. Um, and I'm not printing points here. Let's see if it makes sense. message makes sense. Um, not here though. But we have to wait till it copy. Oh, I need run. Okay. And I have to get. Okay. B L G M H P G C. Uh, MHP PC. Okay, this is the message. Why not? And it's the correct answer. Okay, let's hope the part two is uh, simple. Oh, I need to um, mark my time. It was exactly 30 minutes. Okay. Uh, good thing you didn't have to wait because it would have taken a long time, much longer than the three seconds in example. Impressed by your sub power communication capabilities, the elves are curious exactly how many seconds would they have need to wait for that message to appear. Um, oh, we know answer to that, right? So it actually is printed here. Oops, sorry, here. You printed like step this. Um, okay, the, 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 here we'll, we will have um, off by one error, right? Zero seconds, we have points, right? Oh, that appears to be the correct step. Yeah, it appears to be the correct step. Let me try to feed this number. Yeah, that's the right answer. Okay, <laughs> the second part was was like already solved, basically. So and we didn't even messed up the wolf by one error. Okay, cool. So this is, okay. I guess um, let, let me let me. Yeah, it was basically. Need that right? Step area dimensions nail range. Well, we don't need uh, those. We will not be using those. So let me remove them. Let me remove those as well. And actually, we always be using new area because otherwise uh, we would stop already. Right? So reduced. E, Y, or oh, basically returning the, the step itself. Okay, this is fine uh, with me. So, uh -huh. okay, yeah, that seems to be fair enough. Uh, do we need this? I don't know. Probably not. Um, uh, uh, oops, sorry. This is how we do this. Uh, and it even returns. Well, the nature of the task is we have to print and then do like human input on it, right? Because we can't. Uh, and I also want to print white spaces instead. And probably find the code character for like field in box. Right? Let me find something like box and not this box. Huh. There are pseudo graphics somewhere, I'm, I'm sure. Almost sure. Maybe it's in technical symbols. Uh, technical symbols. Uh, no. 
no, like uh, like the ones that terminals use, right? For yeah, like these ones, like completely filled left seven eight blocks, left three quarters blocks, full block. Okay, like this, full block. Right? Let's see. Yeah, <laughs> much better, I think, in my opinion. Right? I I probably have uh, like increased line height, but if I return it to is there where that it's supposed to be? Okay, dark shade, medium shade. Oh. There must be non Unicode one as well, right? Because. Or not. Okay, yeah, this this one seems correct. So. And yeah, okay, so actually I want to this print align does print one U line where I don't need it and doesn't print one where I do need it, right? So I have to place it differently a little bit, a little bit. Well, oh, and then we have you have to use probably two two sequences like that. So after we print the full row, we just yeah, and now we get rid of this empty line, and we print the empty line of the last character. So as a as a result of expression print is printed with its on its own line. Okay, now I'm. I kind of yeah hate this this tradition of putting the extra space where it doesn't belong. So I'm going to do something like this. Well, let's. I can actually use format if I remember how to. Yeah, like maybe something like that. So one. Now we have a properly formatted message, actually, sort of, right? So put one and here. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we need extra space here. Maybe we need parents. Okay, yeah, let's let's leave it with that. Uh, I don't think it really matters. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so these ones are pretty self-explanatory, right? Points, next point, next step, loading box, print points, and then cycle, right? So, well, we can we could have used um, maybe a loop is better here actually. 
Maybe the loop is better here. Yeah. Let's re-implement re this using all. Okay, so we have basically we have points, which will be equal to points, right? Then we have step or second, which will be zero. We will start with zero. And then we have an area which starts with this one box with it. Well, actually, it should start with the bounding box. So yeah, if I put bounding box in area, something like that. Right. So it should start actually with area of bounding box of points. Okay, uh, then we go to our first step, the points, the bounding box area is, well, actually, I don't really need this, right? Okay, let's call it uh, BB. And we have B if area is Bigger. And then we do this, but we don't need this. And actually, we can actually string join instead of printing, right? So if I put this. This way we will return a string instead of printing a string, right? Which is always better. Uh, because we can then actually print it. Okay, X1, do we need those? I don't think so. Well, we can print uh, like a bounding box, right? And here we just can print. Well, we can, we can print uh, Yeah, 
analysis. And we're going to cast another piece of somewhere. And, uh, Okay, yeah, so basically, second item, rounding box, and uh, this message, and return new. Okay, return new, but it's fine. I just have to check that it uh, compiles. Yeah, it compiles. So I, I think it's more or less done. Okay. Yeah, it was fun task, pretty simple one. And I'm happy that closure data structures weren't like um, an obstacle here, right? Because if it was really computational intensive, the way we always create like new new vectors and new sequence of all the coordinates and like leaving old ones behind we generate a lot of garbage but because uh, like runtime is not that big like ten thousand just ten thousand it is okay um in better world we would probably have to to replace them in place like yeah, basically change them here. Uh, but then we wouldn't be able to do stuff like um, calculate a bounding box for the next step. And if it's bigger, print the previous one. Well, we could if we just move them backwards in time, actually. I guess that's a trick that they are struggling with in imperative languages, right? We, we don't have that problem because we can keep both values around previous one and uh, next one. Okay, okay, this is then day 10. Uh, thanks you for watching and uh, see you around. Come back for more. Bye bye.